Scripts for custom tools follow the same paradigm as we've seen in the previous parts of this series. A single script is responsible for handling the actions of all players. Let's demonstrate by creating a simple box spawning tool. We register the custom tool in server init like we normally would. Tool properties like the enabled status that were previously handled through the registry now have proper API functions instead. The reason is of course that these now need to be done for each player. When enabling the tool for each player, we could do it in the init function by just looping over all the players. But since the init function is only run once at load time, it wouldn't work for new players that join afterwards. Instead, we use the player's added iterator every frame. Each player in the session will show up in this iterator exactly once, even those who were already in the session when the script loaded. So if you need to do something once per player, this is the recommended way. There is also a players removed iterator for players that leave the session, but we don't need that right now. The main logic for the tool can be handled in the server tick function. We loop over all the players and for each player we check if the tool is active and in a state where it can be used while also checking if the use tool button has been pressed. If so, we spawn a box and give it some forward velocity. Let's also complement the spawning with particles and a sound effect using client call as we learned in part 6. In a real-world scenario with network latency, there will always be a slight delay between pressing the button and seeing the tool firing. Let's unfold what's going on and why this happens. The player presses a button, causing an input event that gets sent to the server. When that event reaches the server, the tick function will spawn a box and notify all clients about it. The script also sends out a client call for the particle and sound effect. This data is eventually received on the other end and not until then will they be visible to the player that fired the tool. This whole process can take a couple of frames, depending on the network type and the physical distance between the client and the server, causing a noticeable input lag from pressing the button to seeing the tool firing. To make tools feel more responsive, it's common to trigger particle effects, animations, light flashes and sound effects directly from the client as soon as the local input is detected. This will give the player an audiovisual cue immediately when the tool is fired, but the consequence of firing the tool, in our case, a new box being spawned, will need to go through the server and show up a few frames later. Let's alter the code to make this happen. In our case, we need to add the client tick callback and move over the sound and particles to run on the client instead. This will result in two blocks of almost identical code for detecting if the tool has been fired, but spawn a box on the server and do the sound and particles on the client. By doing it this way, we can play the particle and sound effect as soon as local input is detected and the server is now only responsible for spawning the box. All our internal tools are implemented this way, but it's totally optional, so if it feels complicated, it's fine to just do everything on the server. It'll still work, but you may experience some input lag.